Dr. Jeffrey Jacobs. Also, I have Anne Morrissey. I also have Michael Chancellor and Anna Kite, as well as Goodwill Ambassador for Gateway Health, Sean Hyde Tilburg. So welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Right, today we're talking about innovation, and then I would want to know all of you, if you could tell me or describe how your innovations have been contributing towards addressing women and girls' health, and talk about your innovations. What are they about? Tell us more about your innovations. Okay, so InPress Technologies has a device for postpartum hemorrhage, which is um, designed to quickly stop um, bleeding and maternal. Uh, Postpartum hemorrhage is the number one cause of maternal mortality in the world, and so it's definitely directly linked to the sustainable development. Yeah, I represent PATH, uh, a not-for-profit that's been in work for 40 years now, uh, working in vaccines and drug development, device diagnostics, and systems improvements. And we've partnered with uh, UC Berkeley, University of California at Berkeley, to develop a a new novel formulation of amoxicillin called Nutmox. And it's, uh, it's amoxicillin mixed with peanut butter, which becomes stable, it's palatable for children, and very easy to manufacture. I work for a charitable foundation called the SHM Foundation, and our focus um, has been really on targeting the mental health of pregnant um, uh, women, HIV positive pregnant women and new mothers, by providing uh, mobile phone support groups for them. Um, so that they can talk about the psychosocial effects of living um, with HIV. I am here for Smart Parent, which is a, um, an, an innovation designed by Dr. Kuni Lowe from the Gateway Health Institute, which is an organization in South Africa. Um, it uses three, oh, not three, it uses low-cost technologies, a combination of it, such as USSD phone technology, cloud-based helpline, peer and buddy support system, as well as um, the what three words location technology. It helps to um, give evidence-based knowledge to mothers, fathers, and also primary caregivers um, to promote breastfeeding, but also locate and get mothers who are on antiretroviral treatment to, if they've defaulted, to get them back into the care system. I understand you're here for Mac for Mothers, which is working on postpartum hemorrhage, which is an issue now in the world. Why do you think we need new innovations to address postpartum hemorrhage? So as Anne mentioned, um, postpartum hemorrhage is the, still the number one killer of women globally uh, from direct causes of maternal mortality. And despite all of the progress that has been made, innovations are still required because women continue to die and we're interested in Impress because of its very unique approach to addressing postpartum hemorrhage and we believe that its promise is really to help that unmet need in the space that currently exists to help address further further postpartum hemorrhage so thus the need for innovation that's that's good interesting <laughs> and and we know like technology it's it's something that young people are really interested in nowadays and Impress coming up with a new technology. How do you think that technology is going to contribute towards realizing the sustainable development goals? Is there any, any idea or, or vision that Impress is trying to help in achieving that? Absolutely, absolutely. So the, the vision of Impress is to eradicate the mortality and morbidity that's associated with postpartum hemorrhage. That's a big, bold vision. Um, our technology is Jeff said operates differently than other treatments that are available currently in that it actually works with a woman's body, um, which is a woman's body is designed to contract after she delivers a baby and ours supports that natural process. And Mr. Yes. Chancellor, <laughs> right. we know like there are different kinds of amoxicillin. Mm -hmm that are out, we have been using amoxicillin for a while now, and having Nutmox as a new technology or new innovation that is trying to help address child modality. How do you think 
the Natmox amoxicillin is different. How different is it with the other amoxicillins that were existing? In order to meet the sustainable development goals by 2025, which is to, to eliminate diarrheal disease death and, and pneumonia deaths in children from one to five, it's very necessary to, to bring new technologies to market. There's two million kids die from diarrheal diseases and pneumonia every year. That's like 10 A380 jetliners crashing every day. And so it's gonna take a lot of work to, to bring uh, new technologies to the area. Nutmox is a child-friendly, it's uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, peanuts are part of a staple diet. And so this is a, something that kids are very familiar with. The peanuts also mask the taste of amoxicillin. So this is something that the kids eat like they're having a little bit of peanut. And it's packaged in a, in a, in a five-day course of 10, of 10 doses. Uh, very simple to use and easy to use for, for the kids. That's good. And then we also realized like, there is this issue of antimicrobial resistance. Mm -hmm. So. How do you think this Nutmox innovation is going to address that, which is a yeah. growing public health concern? Antimicrobial resistance is a, is a big problem with a lot of different drugs in, in uh, high, uh, in low and middle income countries as well as high income countries. Uh, amoxicillin is a very widely used uh, antibiotic. By packaging this in a single package, where it's, the patient will actually complete the whole dose. We hope to, to keep the AMR uh, risk down with us. And Sean, we understand like you are one of the winners of Gateway Health. It's one of the winners of the VIFT Healthcare Prize. So how do you think like the innovation of Gateway Health is going to relay information in terms of breastfeeding and nutrition information to people that are in developing countries, people that are in rural areas. They difficult, it's difficult there to access like, technology or... Okay. It's difficult to use mobile technology in those areas. So how do you think your innovation is going to help in that? This innovation works on USSD mobile technology, so it's not necessarily just smartphones. Um, it's it's like sending a please call me, which is you, you send a code and then a number and then it, it gets sent. So it's not, you don't have to have an app for it. Um, also, we use what 3 word technology, which is instead of using coordinates, um, GPS coordinates to find people in rural areas because there's not adequate um, and proper home addresses that you can use, they will give you a three word code that, um, for instance, at the hotel I was staying, it was Union. How, house Tulip, that was my um, GPS location, and that way we can find women, and also if they don't have a smartphone, we can send a health worker with a smartphone and actually drop a pin there, so that in future we can go look for her, give her reminders, send her updates on information, and also with the buddy system, if we can't find her, we can find her trusted buddy, and we can find out through them where they are, to so give them the information, um, or just get, the, get them back. The, the biggest concern is if they're defaulting on their antiretrovirals. That's, that's the biggest thing. Just get them back so they can breastfeed children because breastfeeding is ultimately the most economic way of nourishing children and the best way. That's good. And back to you, Jeff. Like, we know there are, well, there is a partnership between infrastructure technologies and man for models. So how is that working? How is it like? So, so, so far, we've been working with uh, Impress, I guess, since 2014. Uh, we identified <clears throat> Impress and the, the promise of their innovation when we were doing some scoping exercises of innovations in the space of maternal mortality. And so far, we've supported them with assisting them on looking at their cost of goods, because we know how important price and, uh, is for low- and middle-income countries. And we've also supported them on country level research going into countries that they've been into three countries in Africa one and, and India to really talk and validate their problem statement understand how uh, healthcare providers are currently using and treating postpartum hemorrhage and getting recommendations from those users on the design 
and the approach that they need to use for their innovation. So that's how we've partnered so far. That's interesting. And back to you, Anna. Mm -hmm. Like, we understand you're providing access to health information, particularly on mental health. Mm -hmm. So how do you think the new mobile device, the innovation that you did, it's going to provide access? The same with the question with the one I asked, Sean. Like, for people that are in communities that it is difficult for them to access technology. How do you think, how is it like so far since you started? What has been the impact? Do you see there is any impact in those communities where it's difficult to access technology? With okay, using so, the um, we've tried and tested this model now in Mexico, in Guatemala, and we currently uh, work with HIV positive adolescents in South Africa in rural and remote areas. And again, we use basic mobile phone technology. Believe it or not, we still use SMS. <laughs> Uh, we send a very large number of text messages <laughs> um, and thanks to our telecoms partners such as Vodacom we're, we're managing to do that. Um, we found that text message is in a very powerful way for, for communication. Um, often these women can't attend physical support groups, uh, they might have childcare requirements, they might have um, t finding the time to attend a physical support group but also stigma is still a massive issue. So being able to send a text message to their peers, so we have tailored support groups of around 10 to 15 uh, women, uh, they're being able to receive regular emotional support from each other, but also get expert advice and information from professionals. Um, and we've evaluated this and we can see uh, there's a significant decrease in depression and anxiety, um, a significant increase in information and knowledge um, about HIV and pregnancy, um, and also a very positive trend towards medical adherence because uh, medical adherence um, is a really complex issue and mental health has a lot to do with it. Um, so we're very excited to see how we can take this model now to Zambia and work um, on helping to train up other health professionals on how to run this, this model but using very simple technology, basic technology. And Anna, we know like Especially in developing countries, community health is something that is really common yes. because of the situation in those countries. So how is the Impress technology working with community health workers in the communities or in the countries that you have tested the technology? Have you involved community health workers or do you have any plans of involving them if the technology gets to all these countries that you want to work with? Yeah, absolutely. So um, so right now we're still in the clinical testing phase, but in order for our technology to be able to scale and to be able to have the kind of impact that we want, we will definitely have to train um, community healthcare workers. And what uh, Jeff mentioned as far as our partnership is concerned, it's paid for us to go to India, it's also paid for us to go to three countries in Africa for us to be able to understand who the workers are that are using it and the users that are using it in order for us to actually be able to have um, the design be appropriate for that area and also for us to understand what kind of training requirements um, will be required. So uh, we will absolutely um, be working with them in the future. Um, although we actually just trained 56 people yesterday in Uganda for our clinical trial. So. That's good. Well, we know like it is important to for private sector to work with government, which is very critical. So this question goes to all of you. Do you see the need to work with governments? Do you have any learning opportunities or have you been working with government? And how do you think they could help scale up your innovations? So, so Merck for Mothers has had a partnership with the, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, IntraHealth, and the government of Senegal now for over four years, specifically on looking at supply chain innovation. And we know and we've seen how critical it is to have government champions and government partners along the way. We can propose ideas, we have innovations that we can bring forward, but without government buy-in, government acceptance, and the, the, scale, the scale and sustainability questions that are so critical to development just aren't achievable. So the government is absolutely critical. The sustainable development goals, uh, in order for them to be met, 
it requires a multi-sectoral sort of focus. Uh, government, private industry like Merck, Merck for Mothers, and social enterprises like PATH. If we don't all work together, we don't get to the end game, and the end game is to save lives of children. I agree, it's critical to be working with government, and um, I think with our model, we, we our, our vision really is that when you get diagnosed with a condition like HIV, um, when you get given your pills, you also get given your tailored support group um, in any clinic that you, you are working, that you, you come across. Um, and in order to do that, we need to be working with the government. So yeah, it's key. It is essential for us to have um, a buy-in from the National Department of Health and we actually already have people in place um, that are working on technical um, committees and groups that are um, already working on a buy-in from the government but, um, sorry, yes, we also want to assist it with the government because they have projects like Mom Connect and Nurse Connect so that we can exchange information that's already been attended by both of us and help broaden their pl platforms and like, scale it and maybe like, implement it in different countries at some point. Yeah, the governments are, are critical for our ability to be able to operate and have impact in a country and then and also for scale, uh, working with different countries and their, and their governments is essential. Which is one of the reasons we actually chose Uganda because they're very open to our working together. That's critical. So, final question or round up to this conversation. Do you think you are gaining some positive insights with regards to your innovation at this UNGA? What do you hope to gain out of it? Are you meeting private sector and governments that you think you could partner with in your innovations? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. I mean, it's been it's been very it's been educational. The contacts have been fabulous. The exposure has been wonderful. Connecting with partners that we've had and talking about future opportunities has been fantastic. For us, it's a good opportunity to match some offered funds to move the development of Nutmox along. I agree. It's been a fantastic platform um, to just you know to be able to showcase what we're doing and and to find fellow partners. It's obviously been a great honor for everyone to be in the, this beautiful assembly, but um, I think it's very important because it also um, highlights on not just a national but international level that there are some pretty good innovators, but also grassroots level African innovators. Um, and I think this, this puts us in a more serious light in our own government and on a world level. Thank you. It's Wonderful. been great having you all. Thank you very much. And thank, thank you for you. joining us, mm -hmm. everyone, every child, Facebook Live. And it was great talking to all of you. We hope that these innovations will create real impact in the lives of women and girls across the world. And we hope that you get the best out of this year. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very us. much. Thank you. Thank you.